Welcome to Ideas in Action, a television series about ideas and their consequences. I'm Jim Glassman. This week, the Euro crisis. The Europeans' attempt to forge a common currency is in trouble. As America focuses on its own economic problems, several European countries are fighting for their economic survival. Expensive bailouts are the only thing keeping them afloat. Could a European economic tsunami hit America's shores? Joining me to discuss this topic are Desmond Lachman, resident fellow at the American Enterprise Institute, Martin Neal Bailey, senior fellow at the Brookings Institution, and Gregor Peter Schmitz, Washington correspondent for the German news magazine Der Spiegel. The topic this week the Eurozone crisis and what it means for America. This is Ideas in Action. Welcome, gentlemen. Gregor, it was about a decade ago that the Euro was born, and there were naysayers, certainly, but the euro has stood up pretty well until recently. Why is it now on the verge of collapse? Well, I think bailout fatigue is a nice way to put it if you look at it from a, from a German perspective. Uh, Germans were very reluctant to introduce the euro, as you, as, as you already mentioned, to give up the Deutschmark. But then for a while, it seemed like a real success model and actually the, the German uh, export driven economy profited immensely from the euro and that is something that is sometimes not communicated clearly enough in the current debate. But to come back to the bailout fatigue, uh, if you look at the debates in Germany, uh, people are understandably to a certain extent reluctant to bail out countries that have borrowed uh, their way into disaster and the numbers are staggering now. Under the, uh, the last rescue package, Germany would have to vouch for more than 200 a billion euros, theoretically, which is about 85% of the German uh, a tax income per year. And of course, people are very uh, uncertain if any of the measures, be it euro bonds, be it other measures, will really be effective in the long run. So on the other hand, of course, as, as I said earlier, Germany not just profited immensely from the European Union, but also German banks in the run up to the crisis have been part of that bonanza. So in a way you could say the bailout packages now for Greece and other countries have also been bailout packages for the German banks because they are undercapitalized. So it's a very tricky debate and that's why it is so difficult for leaders like Chancellor Angela Merkel to really um, lead because each side has valid arguments. Sovereign debt defaults do happen. They happen all the time when there's a, a global financial crisis. Um, the complicating factor here is the, the euro as a currency. I mean, if, for example, the Greeks were still on the drachma, it wouldn't be as big a deal, or would it? It's, it's also about the banks, because that is a very important uh, aspect that um, actually the European banks have so much sovereign debt in its books. So that if, 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 if sovereign debt suddenly loses its value, uh, to, or, or would be in the bank, in the books with the real value, the, the European banks would be really in trouble, and they are not getting many, much capital anymore from the American banks either. As we, as we. Uh, by by heard the way, just like, sorry to interrupt, yeah. but is one of the reasons that European banks hold so much Greek debt the fact that Greece is part of the European monetary system, and that if it if we're still on the drachma, that wouldn't that wouldn't have happened, or does it make that much difference? Of course, it has been facilitated. I mean, that's what I was uh, hinting at in the in the beginning. That of course there was this bonanza all over Europe going on, that the capital was going to these countries in the periphery, and uh, for a long time that worked really well for the banks. But now, of course, they have to face the consequences. What you said, what you said earlier about these uh, defaults happening all the time. The big difference, of course, is that. We don't have one treasury. We have 17 different uh, treasury departments uh, in a way. So to make this next step, to uh, come to an agreement on a European fiscal authority in a way, and that is something that the uh, Germans, the French, and the others are working on now, this is much harder even than any bailout. The debates about that are much harder than any bailout. And it, it's very tricky. It's also tricky if you compare it to the US Treasury, for example. The US Treasury doesn't have to bail out California or different states or so. So it's a, a, a huge responsibility now to create that fiscal authority that theoretically would have then 
to bail out countries like uh, Greece or even much larger countries. Italy has six times that of, of, of Greece, so it's a much larger number. We did an interview with George Soros, who obviously knows a thing or two about currency speculations, and that was one of the first things he said as well, that he is reminded of 2008 and of Lehman Brothers, and particularly of that capital shortage that might, might make, to really turn that into a global crisis, obviously. What about the solution or potential solution of having a kind of unified euro bond. The Greek government borrows money, it borrows it in euros, but it's the Greek government that's on the hook. And so there's a proposal that there would be a euro bond with all of the members of the European Monetary Union on the hook. What would people in Germany think of that? Well, <laughs> it depends on who you talk to. I mean, euro bonds is basically the dirty word in German politics now, or even in European politics. When you talk to an official or to, to a politician, I mean, if you, if you talk to to um, civil servants, they will tell you probably at some point we're going to have euro bonds. We are also at some point going to have a fiscal union in Europe, and we are working on that. Uh, however, if you talk to an elected official like Chancellor Merkel, for example, who recently said in Parliament, again, we're not going to have euro bonds, or German Finance Minister Wolfgang Schäuble, who also says, no, we're not going to have euro bonds. Because, of course, the downsides are very obvious to a country like Germany. We would probably lose our AAA rating. We would be on the hook for tremendous amounts of money, as Osman pointed out, our payments on our interest uh, would, would, would increase significantly. But yeah, probably that is one of the solutions that is discussed, uh, but it is so hard to communicate in Germany. It's so hard to, it's uh, not just in Germany, but also in some of the other countries that will be affected. Gregor, you, you want and, to say And it could actually it. undermine the willingness of some of the countries to really be serious about cutting uh, expenses now because they will still think, well, there's still this other solution out there at some point that will affect the markets or the anticipation of the markets uh, as well. Do you think the euro has failed? The euro itself was an economic idea, but also a political idea. Exactly. I mean, we, we talked about the initial resistance in Germany on, and some other countries, but then after a while, of course, people realize, oh, I can travel to any country in Europe, no, in, in, in the Eurozone, and I don't have to exchange money anymore. It's great. It's, it's an achievement or so. Uh, so it became more popular. But uh, of course, people now uh, see these downsides, and they realize that the, the second step just wasn't taken. Yeah, this idea of come to an agreement on a European economic policy. Gregor, do you agree with that? Do you think that the euro was fundamentally flawed from the start? Well, I wouldn't go that far. I, I think you always have to take into consideration that it was ultimately a political partner <laughs> also. It was part of the European unification process. It was very important um, at that time, because whatever happens, even if you install a European fiscal authority, basically it will be run by the Germans, of course. And that will lead to even more animosity, because as you know from your time at the IMF, it's not very unpopular if you dictate other people what to do with their money, what to do with their households, what to do with their people, ultimately. So that, that is a huge problem. What Marty said is exactly right. That's why it's so much harder in Europe to introduce a, a common currency, because we thought that maybe with the European unification process, it would be much easier to move from, let's say, Finland to Greece, to from Germany to 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 Belgium or whatever. But in, in reality, it is pretty tricky. It is hard, and we don't really have that European public sphere yet that some people were dreaming about at the beginning of the unification process. And, and One of my priorities is trying to figure out an action plan for what we do um, if there's a failure in Europe. And obviously, that's not something you do in public, but it's something I think that should be being done. And I think it's yeah. something the Americans are extremely worried about. I'm, Chancellor Merkel was uh, here in D.C. in June to get the Presidential Medal of Freedom. And from what I heard from talks to government officials, that's pretty much the only thing <laughs> they discussed. <laughs> the euro crisis, not Afghanistan, not Iraq. So it's just uh, the euro crisis. Well, she's getting a lot of pressure Maybe from the Americans Libya. to, yeah, uh, yeah, definitely, uh, to yeah. bite the bullet and, and exactly. do the bailout, right? Exactly. Thank you, Desmond. Thank you, Marty. And thank you, Gregor. Thank you. And that's it for this week's Ideas in Action. I'm Jim Glassman. Thanks for watching. Keep in mind that you can watch Ideas in Action whenever and wherever you want. To watch highlights or complete programs, just go to ideasinactiontv.com or download a podcast from the iTunes Store. Ideas in Action, because ideas have consequences.